Determine if the vector field is conservative. If it is, we're asked to find the potential function. Let's go ahead and work this out carefully. Solution. First, uh, let's rewrite our vector field. We have a minus sign here, and we really want it to be a plus sign first. So f of xy is equal to parentheses e to the x cosine y, just copying down the first term, and then i, and then plus parentheses negative e to the x sine y parentheses j. And now we'll check to see if it is indeed a conservative vector field. So this here is big M, and this here is big N. And what we have to check is del M, del Y, and we also have to check del N, del X. Now, if these guys are both continuous and equal, then yes, this is a conservative vector field. So let's compute del M, del Y. So we're thinking of this as m, so del m del y, we're treating e to the x as constant. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we're going to get negative e to the x sine y. Now we're computing del n with del x. So we're treating sine y as constant. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So we get negative e to the x sine y. So both of these guys are continuous. And we have that del m del y is equal to del n del x. So the answer is yes. It is a conservative vector field. So that takes care of the first question. Because it is a conservative vector field, that means something. So therefore, there exists a function, this means there exists, f, such that the vector field, big F, is equal to the gradient of f. And if you forget what the gradient is, in this case, it's del f, del x, i, plus del f, del y, j. So all we do is we take del f, del x, and we set it equal to this, and we take del f, del y, and we set it equal to this. So really that's all you do. Whenever it's conservative, this is your del f, del x, and this is your del f, del y. And then to find the potential function, you just work with these. Let's go ahead and do it carefully. So we have del f, del x, that's equal to e to the x cosine y. And we also have del f, del y, and that's equal to negative e to the x sine y. And now we'll carefully integrate. Uh, we get to pick which one we want to integrate. Um, let's see, which one should we do? How about we do the first one? So f of x, y, we're integrating this one here. So we're integrating with respect to x. So the integral of e to the x is e to the x, and we treat the cosine as constant. So this is simply e to the x cosine y. And now we have to add an unknown function of y. So we'll call it little g of y. right? Because whenever you integrate a partial with respect to x, um, you have to add an unknown function of y. So we've used this condition, so done with this one. Now we have to use this one. So what we'll do is we'll take f and we'll compute the partial. So I'll do it over here. So del f, del y, computing this partial here. Well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is going to be negative e to the x sine y. And then the derivative of little g is just little g prime, so g prime of y. And in order to fully use this condition, we have to set our partial equal to this. So this is equal to negative e to the x sine y. And you'll notice these cancel, so we end up with little g 
prime of y equals 0. So therefore, g of y is equal to a constant k. So now we can write the final answer down. So the final answer, the final answer, well, where's f? Let's see, f is right here. So all we do is write it down. So f of x, y, this is our potential function, is equal to e to the x cosine y, and then plus g, which was k. So that is how you find the potential function. So you check if it's conservative. So you check if del, M, del y is equal to del n del x. And it was, and everything's continuous, right? This is continuous, this is continuous. What does that mean? That means there is a function, a little f, called a potential function, such that the vector field is equal to the gradient of the potential function. So basically, you just set this equal to del f del x, and you set this equal to del f del y. Pick one, integrate, and then differentiate, and use the other one, and go from there. I hope this made sense.